But on the simple, on the simple. <laughs> I wonder who put that in there. Funny enough, my track from the Highland Show's got that in there as well. <laughs> what are we doing with another blue New Holland tractor? Well, it's very, very simple. Um, after last year uh, working with New Holland in the big plant, particularly the, the high end of the T7 series, we were following their development of the uh, new Dynamic Command gearbox, which is now on offer, and the largest model that's currently on offer is a T6175. Now, this tractor was described to us by Ben at Agritechnica as the Swiss army knife of tractors. And pretty much, we were like, hmm, if you're confident in that, prove it. Well, they were, and New Holland have fired us over um, one of the very first T6175s, just for a couple of months, and we're, we're having a play with it. We've a lot of different applications that we're trying it. We're really trying to see, is it the Swiss Army knife? We have uh, the Mech 6 pulled out. Uh, we're gonna try it in it. Uh, we're gonna try it in the mowing. We have the diet feeder here uh, on the farm where we're based. We have the 14-ton Fleming trailer that most people will have seen now in some of the pictures. So we're, we're really putting it to the test. New Holland's confidence is so much so that Tim has come all the way over from Basildon uh, to what the, they call officially install the tractor uh, with ourselves. He's going to talk us through the tractor, a little bit about the T6 itself as, as a tractor. And then we're going to get into the cab and do a little bit of a focus on the so-called benefits of the new Dynamic Command gearbox. So um, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to disappear now with my pink t-shirt. I have to point, this is the warmest day I think on record for Northern Ireland and the big man is Milton. But anyway, we'll get there. So I'm going to hand over to Tim now. We're going to take a look around this tractor and look at the functionality of it and see if it really is the Swiss Army knife of tractors. <laughs> Tim, welcome to Grassman HQ. Um, sorry, the barn's a little bit warm and uncomfortable today. Ah, uh, I'm used to this weather, I'm from Basildon. All right, shush now. <laughs> As just said there briefly in the introduction, but just for those who don't know you, who are you, what is your role within New Holland, and why are we here at Grassman HQ, and what are we looking at? I'm product specialist for high horsepower tractors for the UK and Republic of Ireland, so I look after T6 to T9. So 115 horsepower to 700, so quite a... a to big, 700? To 700, yeah, but no, you're not having one at the moment. Okay. Um, the reason we're here today is, uh, obviously last year we ran, we worked with you on the, the T7, so the 230 and the 3 on 5. Yeah. Um, and we know you're quite heartbroken when the 3 on 5 disappeared. So um, yeah. we thought we'd better, you know, bring something back into in its place. Um, behind you we have the T6, uh, the T6 range, is a bread and butter range for us. It is the, the all-rounder. Like Ben said to Agritechnica, it is the, the Swiss Army knife. It does everything on the farm. Uh, it could be on a dark food in the morning, it could be mowing at lunchtime, it could be on a plow in the afternoon, so it is, it is the all-rounder. The T6 range, we've had Electro Command, which is a 16 by 16 transmission, and we've had Auto Command, but we've always had a gap in the middle. Um, for the, the, the demands for the, the farmer are getting more and more. If they don't want to go to Auto Command, we had a gap. So behind us here, we have the Dynamic Command, which is the, 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 new, the new baby. Um, and obviously we spoke about it a lot last year with you guys. We, we teased you with it um, and we said we'd, we'd let you have a go. And here she is. 
Um, when I launched it to the, the, um, the Dither Network six weeks ago, I called it the Game Changer, and I really think it is. Just off the top of your head, what are the key features? Why is it the Game Changer? I mean, I 100% get behind in what you're saying. The T6 New Holland has been um, a very popular tractor, certainly in Ireland. I mean, every corner you turn, you will see one working somewhere. But why is this the Game Changer? The transmission in this tractor is, is the key. Um, the, the, the actual tractor itself hasn't changed, but the transmission is, is, the, is the new part of the tractor. So we have a 24 by 24 power shift, semi power shift transmission, but with twin clutch technology. So you would have come across twin clutch in your auto command last year. So it's always pre-selecting the next gear for you. So it gives you a very seamless gear change, but also it gives you, I mean, you're never breaking drive. So you're not losing torque from the, power, the tractor whenever you do a gear change, because it pre-selects the next gear for you automatically. So we've given you eight power shifts in three ranges. Um, we've worked incredibly hard um, to give you a very good overlap in those gears. So the idea is you've got a gear for every operation you can do. Uh, and when we go in the tractor in a bit, you'll see this firsthand. And this particular tractor, just give us a few of the stats on it, because you have changed things about a wee bit. A T6175, to most people off the top of their head, will be a six cylinder. When we went to tier 4B in 2016, we, we changed the numbers because we had to for uh, legislation. So now the whole T6 range is a four cylinder, barring one. We have one which is a T6 180, which is still a six cylinder. But what you, what you see behind you here is the biggest four cylinder we do in the range. So 145 horsepower rated power, max power 175 horsepower that's available for the tractor. So basically what you're saying is after you've seen what we did with the 315 last year, you thought a four cylinder was all I needed? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Every confidence in that. <laughs> Moving forward with this dynamic commander, all the options, you know, everything else the same. This is a standard T6 tractor. The only difference in this one is the gearbox. Everything else is option. I mean, in this particular one, we have the side winder. Yep. Is that all the same? From a cab point of view, um, there is only, only one option, which is the sidewinder. So very, very similar to what you'd had in your auto command last year. So when we get up there, you see it's very, very familiar to you. That's what we're trying to do. The whole transmission was make it very drivable, make it very, very simple, and make it very, very efficient as well. So the idea is you can jump in this tractor, you could jump in a T7, a T8, or a T9 now, and that armor that you see in there is common across the whole board. But you can still have the classic spec. No, there is no, there's no classic spec. The armor that you see in here is the standard for the, the dynamic commands. That's it? Yep. You can still have mechanical spool valves. You can still go for a, um, you haven't got to have all of the bells and whistles, um, but the sidewind is the standard for the dynamic commands. Oh. Yep. So what we tried to do, you can build a tractor to whatever you want it to be. So the sidewinder you're going to have, um, but then if you want to have manual spool valve, but you want to have electric mid mounts for loaders, it's all available on the tractor. So uh, then obviously the electrical command, I'm assuming, still is on offer. Yeah. Electric command's not going to vanish. Um, electric command will stay. It's, we've had it for 25 years. It's a very, very proven, very reliable um, transmission. It's, it's much loved by many people. It will be the entry level point for the T6. The, the dynamic command, the idea is it sits in the middle. So you can tick a few boxes for people that demand a bit more from, from a tractor, uh, a bit more drivability, um, but don't want to go all the way to an auto command. It, it fills that void that's in, in the middle there at the moment. So the T6 range is uh, broken right down into three specifications with regards to uh, gearbox. We have electrical command. We have now the dynamic command, which yep. will fit in the middle. And then the auto command. Auto command that's, it. that's the three That's options. the three transmission options, yep. And both the dynamic command and the auto command come with the same sidewinder. And then you're building it around that yep. there. So you can make it what you want to make it. So if you don't want to go full spec in a dynamic command, you don't have to. You haven't, um, so you can keep, keep the price point quite low still. Um, but if you want to go for all the, all the features, all the benefits, you can then spec it to wherever you want it to be. Is the dynamic command everything you say and it is? I think so, but I'm a little bit biased. Obviously, the DLG tested it last year. Now, we, we, say it, we, we knew it was an efficient transmission. Uh, the DLG tested it um, back part of last year, just before Agrotechnica, uh, and came back with the world's most efficient force and tractor ever tested. That is not just the amount of fuel it used, but the amount of work it did in a set time as well and it was 9% uh, more efficient than its nearest competition. 9%? 9%. And that's DLG test. So nothing that we've done. That is an independent test by um, the DLG. Now, the reason we got that efficiency is we've got the transmission is very, very efficient because you've only ever got two clutchbacks engaged, a forward and reverse, an odd and an even. So you're not wasting power when you don't need to. You've always got a gear for every operation. You're not caught between a gear in between two gears. 
Um, with the overlap we have, you can run it in the gear you need, um, but also link it to our FPT, Fiat Powertrain Engine. Obviously, we build the engine, we build the transmission, we can harmonise the two together when, we, when, when we're building them to make them work as efficiently as they can. Well, the question we're going to be asked by everyone, so just getting it out there now, everyone's going to send in comments and say, obviously, we step into the T7 range and we have the, we have the power command and we have the auto command. Um, and that will we see a gearbox like this slowly progressing into the bigger ranges? We're always working on new new ideas. That's a yes then. For sure, there's things in development. Yeah. Um, time will tell. Time will tell. Um, but we are 100% behind this transmission. Um, we are absolutely convinced by what it can do. And yeah, watch this space. So are you going to show me a few bits about it now, up in the car? The big thing is, is is the drivability, we need to get in the cab, run through some the features, I can show you through the screen, um, show you how to get to these features, show you how simple it is, uh, and show you what makes it the real, the driving tractor it is, but also the game changer that I talk about. Tim, it's 32 degrees outside today. It's like Costa La Essex, isn't it? <sighs> We're not used to this in this country. Oh, you're, so, you're always telling me it's raining. <laughs> it's always raining. Yeah. That's why I'm in there, Addy. Addy came in there and switched the air cold on. The big man's dying. He's got the shorts and all on. Right, we're trying our best here, folks. We're inside the T6. We've got a camera on the screen. I'm not going to lie, I've done approximately 20 hours on this tractor uh, since we got it all on the road. Um, just to try and get used to the transmission. We'll have it set up. Wee bits and pieces. I have it in my name. I have my screen up the way I like it because that's exactly what you've just said yep. that's coming from having that's the 315 yep. but the bit that we're here to talk about and the bit that we want to go through is this transmission and straight away anybody looking here it's different that's it so what you can see is it, this it gives shows you that you've got the, the eight speed power shifts in three ranges yeah so this has got 24 with 24 transmission mm -hmm. speed but what you've got is it's, it's the overlap in the trans transmission that is the key to the driving of this machine yeah. Um, so what you have is, with a lot of conventional um, power shifts, where one gear finishes, the next one literally just starts. But what you'll see on the screen here, um, it shows you the overlap. So what you have is in A range, you go between 2K and you go up to just under 10K, so yeah. in, in a working range. But then B range starts at under 4K. So that, that is the crucial part to it. Is this retrospective roughly or not? Yeah. Because I looked at this, so when I get up to here, yeah. Is this the same speed as if I was in this gear here? Roughly. Roughly. Yes. So that's the level of speed matching. So, so you can see there's only one tiny gap here. That's it. So what it is basically is if not in, in a traditional power shift you're working in the very top of A range. Yeah. Um, and then you've got nowhere to go. You've got if you want to go to the next range you've got to do a range change. Yeah. Um, so you can get the scenario where you've got the power but you haven't got the, the gears to do the change so yeah. that's where the efficiency comes in for this transmission but with this one you could run it in in the middle of B range because um, B range let's say goes between it's under 4 up to 17k yeah and then it gives you the option to have gears above you and gears beneath you with a twin clutch system because you pre you pre-selected the next gear already every gear change is instant instantaneous so if you are working in a field in, in operation um, but every, every gear change you do is literally straight into it. So um, you, you don't lose drive, you don't, you're not losing torque of the engine, and literally every gear is there, yeah. ready to go. What I really like about this gearbox, this is familiar, right? Yep. This is all familiar, right? This is familiar with, yep. the, with the bit I don't like, the clunk, but we'll not get into that. <laughs> you have the option. So if I want to go up a gear, so if this camera, can pick up on this. So I want to select, I'm an A1, okay? The reverse is pre-selected to A4 in this situation, but for forward, I'm down an A1. So I have three ways, not one, not two, but three ways I can change gears in this tractor. So, like your auto command, simulates faster, so. faster, faster. Now, we also have the rabbit and the tortoise on the function lever and on your auto command that was changing between your ranges you, you had three separate cruise controls, three ranges so look again so if you like your buttons 100 percent is there you come to the end of the line when you're driving you can hit the back button almost like the old 
range commands. Yep. Very you can similar. either push the rabbit or push it forward yep. and she goes up into the next range or whatever the next gear she feels she can handle because she will speed match. Yep, Unlike she, some other brands I have spent some time yep. in. She's got, we call it IntelliShift mm -hmm. uh, or Smart Range Chain. So basically what it does is um, you haven't got to go through every single gear. So if you're running, say you're in, you're in the middle of B range, the tractor is monitoring the engine load and also acceleration as well and even things down to oil temperature as well. If you and when I press the light, it's telling me where it's going to go. That's it. So you press the shift button behind, and then it'll actually tell you where it shifts to. So at the moment, we're in, we're in A8, and because we've got no load, it can go all the way into B range. So you can, in, in, in this example here, you would skip all of B range barring B8. So if you wanted to get going in a hurry, um, you know, if you're pulling out of a junction or whatever you're doing, literally you can just, you can just skip it and go all the way up and, so, and down as well. So that's two of the ways yep. to change gears, right? Here. Well, yep. my thumb is the range change in the back or here. There is a third way built into this tractor, which I did not know okay. until I rung you. Yeah. So here's our slightly changed. I'll call it mid mount. So the mid mount spool stick so or whatever you want. This has got to pull. this has got the advanced joystick. The advanced advanced joystick. Like this is the advanced joystick for everybody that's paying that's attention, right? We have our usual usual for the hydraulics float whatever we can pick our different colors here we can do what we need to do but here's yep. what we can do there's three buttons at the bag here up gears up gears we'll have our shift have the range shift in there as well range yep. shift in there as well yep. up i've skipped my range yep. push the button and we can keep going up the gears yes, and what we can do here that just you know for possibly loader function yeah. or the whatever we have this you know if we're doing something here it means we're not having to come back here to nudge it forward or we're not having to operate you know like this here to try and go yeah. forward and do we've got it all and i think this will be a very the i the idea behind it would push for loaders because obviously if you had a load if you had a load on this tractor you'd run it through that joystick the idea being is you could um if you're moving bales for example you could um go up to a bale you can go down the gears as you get up to it you can then do your um, move your bale and then lift the bale up again and then go back up the gearbox again. Um, I'm also showing the dynamic start slot, which we'll go to in a bit. You can literally, it is the ultimate loader tractor, 100% for that. The buttons on the side there obviously do your third service as well. Yeah. Um, but what we've just launched on Dynamic Command also is the um, Isobus Class 3. And you can actually configure those to do anything to do with ISA bus. So you can configure those if you're running an a ISA bus um, bit of machine on the back. You can configure those buttons to do whatever you want them to do. So anything that's got a square on them, on this on the tractor, can be, is configurable now for ISA bus. So you can you wow. Can, so if you've got an ISA bus and a wagon on the back of it, so you're not you're not tied. No, you can move you can move them around. Um, you can you can select you can change all your that's it, it's on there you can change your small valves around to suit the operation you can put onto your front linkage if you wanted to um, you can make them what you want to make them and this is the whole thing behind this tractor it's making it a driver's tractor you can make it what you want to do so what you can do is um, you can save different configurations for different implements so you can have it in there so you've got one set for the plough one for the whatever you can you can have them all saved in there. Forward reverse as standard. Forward and reverse on the shuttle. Forward and reverse uh, on the shuttle and yeah. forward and reverse yeah. here. So for health and safety, you have to start with the clutch in this first, first time round. Um, but as soon as you've done that, you can then obviously you can you can go to your forward and reverse shuttle that's on on the command grip. So we have choice of here and then neutral. Neutral. On, yeah. Or same with your what you had on the HD, you had the electronic handbrake on the HD. You can have that as well on here if you wanted to. Oh, you can have that push yep, down that's and up an option. and down. So you, you knock yep. it down and up, and then obviously you're neutral, and then the the, ham, the automatic ham, electric handbrake will come on. Now, I have figured this out. I did not know what this was, but in the auto command, the three LED lights here, which I had referred to when I had Lisa McQ in with me, as this is the one that puts you into like stealth mode, but, or fast mode, but basically this is for your uh, your shuttle sensitivity of that's it. That's number your eight. Sh shuttle response to that's it. So one is just if you're looking nice, easy, take off. Yep. You're going at a reasonable speed, you pull it straight into reverse, she comes nice and slow. Yep, so fills or something. Almost a stop and then into reverse. Back up and then here is forward to reverse. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a unique feature on this transmission is a pure um, forward and reverse shuttle. Mm -hmm. So it has a separate clutch back for forward and reverse. Mm -hmm. um, so with a conventional one, you have one clutch pad that has to stop, brake, drive, and then go into reverse. 
with this it doesn't. So as soon as you as soon as you hit the forward and reverse button, um, it, it, it can it's dynamic forward and reverse. And with that, you can I say you can adjust the, the aggressive. So number one, like say, is a nice sedate change. Number two is a happy medium. But number three, if you're if you work in a clamp or something like that, where you need, you need, you know that you need to know that when as soon as you hit that button, which is going backwards, it's much more dynamic, a much quicker response, um, which is unique in this sector. So we've got the gears sorted. I mean, any man that's who's driven any type of New Holland is going to understand that the, the principle that's behind this. We've got full uh, forward reverse, two forward reverse now. We're yep. we're we're not tied, uh, especially for the guys that's running their park commands or range command gearboxes. Yep. We're no longer six gears in, nope. in reverse. We've got, got the full 24, 24. The one thing you do have to remember that I learned the hard way. Is that when you go into reverse, do yep. so you actually then pull back to go faster? Yeah. So what it is, it's it's always the philosophy behind it is you push it the, the direction of travel to go up the gears. You push up to go. Is the so direction. for instance, I'm in my tractor. My reverse is selected. The handbrake is still on. Yep. So in order for me to go Down. faster in reverse, yep. I have to pull back, and she's changed her yep. range there. So it's the, it's the direction of tra whatever track direction the tractor is travelling in the gear stick then the command grip follows that direction to go up the gears but it takes a bit of getting used to that so it does <laughs> once you get used to it though you find it, it's it's second nature and the, the idea behind having the um, the command grip the moves is if you are looking behind you um if you're you know looking at an implement behind you you haven't got to look for buttons just go up and down the gears it's, it's the hand instantly you can find the command grip and you can go up and down the gears very very simply so what else is special about this package and this tractor? Okay. Well, just on the on the sidewinder, obviously the sidewinder, like I said, is the standard option. Um, so what you see here, this is called the advanced armrest, so where it, where it physically moves, that is the standard. You can go for a, a basic armrest, which is, in essence, it looks the same, but it's fixed, it doesn't move. Um, so that's the basic armrest, so um, to go up and down the gears, you have to use the hair and the tortoise to do that. Um, I so it's physically fixed. You don't have this option? No. Nope. Um, but I said this is the default option for the UK and Republic of Ireland. This is this is this is the option. Um, on the, obviously this one's got electric remotes and uh, electric mid mounts. So obviously you've got your, all your hydraulics on here as well. Uh, if you go for a manual, you can have manual spools. Ma um, then you still got your linkage. You still got your forward and reverse shuttle. You still get everything else on there. Um, you just don't have obviously your blister pad or on there for your um, for your electric remotes. That's all. And once again, we've just tried to get everything simple. So. From a, from a colour coding point of view, anything orange is to do with engine or direction of travel. So it's, in, it's all on here, you'll see orange on here, orange down there, and also on the ICP as well. Black is, is hydraulics. The idea is is just trying to keep it simple. If people can get into a tractor who, yes. are, who are unfamiliar. Keep it simple, stupid. That's it. That's I think anyone on. could jump in the tractor and go into a day's work with it. They wouldn't be put off by anything at all. Just onto the screen side, obviously this has got the Intellivy 4 screen, which obviously you'd be used to from the um, from your eight, from the HD. Once again, there is a basic option. You can have a, we call it a dog screen, a display of gears, um, which still sits on the end of the armrest, just hasn't got so many features in there. Um, but if you want to do guidance, if you want to do ISO bus, obviously you have to go down this route um, to have those options on there. The magic of this transmission is in the way it works, the way it drives. And some of the features to it, you, you, you access through the screen if you have the Intelliview screen. And what we've done is by hitting the one button, so the gear, the gear symbol in the top left, which is always there, you can just press that button and bang, you're straight into the transmission features. Smooth shift on, off, auto. Yep. Why would you ever put it into off? Okay, so smooth shift, what, what, it, what it's doing is, um, when you're doing a gear change, the engine will actually adjust the RPM very slightly to try and match the engine RPM to the transmission ratio. So when you're going up the gears, it will actually blip the throttle down slightly. And when you're going down the gears, it'll blip the throttle up slightly, which we'll see when we go for a drive. So if you have it on, it's on all the time. So it doesn't matter what you do in the tractor, it will always adjust the engine RPM very slightly for the gear change. If it's off, it's off. If it's in auto, which is where I would run it most of the time, it will be on all the time unless the PTO is engaged. So the idea being is if you've got a PTO um, bit of equipment on the back where it's, it, it doesn't, you don't want the engine RPM fluctuating, it will then switch off. So then when you, when, when you do a gear change, it will then, um, the engine RPM will be exactly the same. Memory shuttle. Okay. On, off. Okay, so memory shuttle is, if you've got memory shuttle off, your start off gear, forward and reverse, will be the same. So you can select the start off gear, whatever start off gear you want. So you see now it's gone off, they're now B5 and B5. That's it. And they, they, they follow each other. 
the highest start-off gear you can have is C1. So if you're running with a tractor with empty or with a light trailer behind it, you can start it in C1 uh, and then you'll never have to do a range change. And it will memorise that as well. So when you key off and key back on again, it will remember where you've told it to have a start-off gear. So no matter where you, where you stop, it will remember where you tell it to do it. If you have memory shuttle on, it means you can have um, a different start-off gear forward to reverse. So the, the idea being is if you were, um, say you were on a, uh, a clamp or you're doing trailer work with it, you could have a, say a B8 going forwards, but then you could have B4 going backwards. So when you came into the pit, put it into reverse, it would then cycle down to B4 and you have a slower going reverse. Dynamic start stop, what's that mean? The party trick, that's what that is. In essence, you can drive this tractor, um, so when you, very, very similar to your auto command. So when you, when you drive, so you start, when you first get in the tractor, you, you obviously use the forward and reverse shuttle to get going. Um, after that, uh, you can then, you've never got to touch the clutch again. So when you, when you want to come to a stop, if the dynamic stop start is on, you can just put your foot on the brake, which will then come to a stop um, without any clutch at all. The gears will go back down to whatever start off gear you're told to go start off in. So if you're running, if you're running on, on the road, you can run it in, in C range, whatever. Um, if you're in C8, when you come to stop, she'll drop down to C1 or wherever you want it to be, take your foot off the brake, she'll then continue going. So you can drive it just like an automatic car or an auto command. And the reason we've got the different settings is obviously off is off. Low, medium, high is just the amount of pressure that needs to be applied to the brake pedal for it to, um, to start, start working basically and, and come, to a, come to a stop. So low would be ideal if you're on a, if you're on a loader, run the yard, you're, you're at low speeds and you want to come to a stop, have it on low. If you're running on the, on the road at higher speeds, then you'd have it on high. Obviously you don't want to just touch the brake and um, you start, it starts going on, slowing down and coming to a stop. Now the beauty of the, the dynamic stop start on this one is you can also incorporate it into a forward and reverse shuttle as well. So if you were on a loader or, so, or um, business like that, you can come to a stop, do what you've got to do, hit the reverse button, take your foot off the brake and then you'll go backwards. So you're not, you're not forced to go in the same direction, you can just stop it on the brake, put, put it into reverse and back you go. Oh, you don't trust me. Obviously, you're playing around with the auto functions. What you'll see is obviously you've got the auto button on here, mm -hmm. and what you can do is uh, you've got two modes for auto field and road. Field and road, that's it. So, if you run it in road mode, um, you can run it in B and C. Mm -hmm. So, it will give you a maximum of 16 power, sh power shuttles, power changes. Okay. The only thing to remember with that is obviously is if you're telling it like you found when you were driving it, if you've got it running all the way down to B1, when you come to a stop, it'll go to B1. Yeah. So, so like you do now, you can adjust the that, span. That felt a little bit like the power command yeah. at the time would always come back to 12, then you yep. had that horrible jump between 12 and 13. Yep. But the party trick is, I've auto mode selected, we're still flashing, yep. I can push it forward yep. to wherever I want. So if I was possibly loaded cart and silage with a trailer, yep. I would suggest there's a good starting yep. off point. Yep. If I'm running about the tractor empty, yep. I don't even have to change my clutch pack. No. C1's fine. All the way through. We can do it and that's all the way through and that's set up so yep. if every time I stop that tractor she will bring yep. herself back but to C1. It's, it's not as if, you know, if you, when you come to stop, once again it will progressively come down. So if you don't come to a dead stop, um, you just slow down to a junction on the brake on the dynamic stop start. She won't go all the way down to C1. She's going to, you know, depending on split and speed, she might go down to C2, C3, depending on the load behind you. Armrest down. That means business. Was there one other thing on here? Oh yeah. You, you, you'd notice from your auto command. Yeah. Um, on your auto command, it was droop control. Yeah. On this one, it's eco and power. So when you, when you're running in auto mode, if you have it totally around to the right, it's in it's in power mode. So what that gives you is it will let the engine rev all the way to 21, 2200 RPM before it does a gear change. Yeah. So if you want to get going in a hurry, you need to get on, as you always tell me you need to, you can run it in, in power. Cool but if you're running empty, or you're running back to the field, or you're on the back roads where you can't get 50K, whatever, you can run it in eco, uh, and then you'll find there's a gear change at sort of 1500 RPM. Um, so then it will change early, try and save you some fuel, but you'll still get out of the road. Exciting now, aren't you?
Oh no, back to the brief. Ha! Hey, one. Oh, I need to stop. Stop. Oh, I reverse now. Yeah, take your foot off the brake. We go backwards. And you can see how that for a loader tractor would be awesome. If you're spending all day doing backwards and forwards, you're doing, you know, you're doing loader work, you're doing um, moving bales around. Automatic does it all the way from it. Combine that with obviously the aggressiveness. You can you can adjust the aggressiveness. Um, you can make it what you want. Obviously, at low speed you'll find more forces needed. The higher speed you wouldn't not be quite so bad. But in essence, you can drive it like a telehandler. And if you link that in with the advanced joystick, uh, if you're moving bales around a field or something like that, you could go down the gears on the, on one stick, come to a stop, lift the bale up, and keep going back up the gears again. Pretty nifty. It's good, isn't it? Game changer. What you might have noticed with it is, obviously, I know you've done a lot of a lot of road work with it. Um, we've actually put another feature into this tractor, um, which is we put a transport power curve into it. So as soon as you hit 22 kilometres an hour, it clicks over to a um, transport power curve. Now the reason we've done that is if you look at any power curve of, a of any engine, it gets to peak torque at sort of 15, 16, 17, 700 RPM, and then it dies away again when it gets to rated, rated speed. Ah. So what we do is... Do you know what? Keep talking. What we do with this is, as soon as you get to 22K, it clicks... Well, we drive, can't we? We can drive. Yeah. As soon as we, as soon as we click over to 22K, it actually clicks over to a, um, a transport power curve, which means that as soon as it hits peak torque, it flatlines the pit torque. So you have you have peak torque all the way across then, all the way across the van to 53k. So when you're um, you know when you're hauling or doing whatever with it, you'll find that when she's on the road doing 50k, she'll lug in there. She'll really she'll really pull hard. So there's the the whole A range completed. Yep. yep. And we're still sat in the seat. We're in the B6 now. Yep. So in one click there we've gone A8 B6. So we've missed out, yep. and every gear change, like I say, is smooth and seamless. Nice. You'd know I'd learned how to drive her. Well, I taught you how the auto worked. That's all right. <laughs> I know that was very. That actually was some job. So right, we're on the road. I have her now in eco. Yeah, right. so put it your auto. So basically what I'm for doing is... That's it. You'll see she changes early. Well, you, you flat out anyway. Wow. I was going too fast, was it? Hold on, they get down here, they sort that out. So that was the one problem, not problem I had, but the way she's set up here now, yeah, the way she, she, she would be coming through all the gears, so yeah, what we'll so, do is, so where so do we see this here? That's it. So right. if you now just knock it forward so she goes, she, the blue line drags up. Because we start from A, that's one. Go to, the, go to the bottom and pick it up. Yeah. That's it. So here I am. That's it. So I have the auto set now that all we're staying is, yep. is in C1. C1. I did C1. not clutch this tractor. I no. am at a standstill, yep. foot on the brake. Yep. I am in ego mode. Yep. I'm just slowly releasing the foot mm -hmm. of the brake. And then she progressively takes that drive and off she goes. And she's changing it. 15, 600 RPM. Nice. Like if you're if you're running empty, if you're running on a back road or whatever, you can run it there, and she'll happily do the gear changes early. Um, she'll also change down as well e economically. Um, it, it gives you the option. You're not forced between one or the other. It gives you that choice. And obviously that that, that control you've got there is progressive as well. So it's not just 15 or 2,200. You can literally change it anywhere you want in between. Obviously, she's now fully in automatic, and every gear change, like even in auto, very, very smooth. So 
there we are. I'm just cruising as if I'm I'm hunting back to the field to do something. Yep. She's in auto mode now, but she's at eco. Yep. So she's changing the gears nice yep. and early. Yep. There we are, we're picking up the speed lovely there. So here I am, I've come to a stop. Come to stop again, change direction. This time I'm fully loaded, yep. I'm fully freighted. I'm yep. a man possessed. You're I'm a man, man. You're I'm man on a mission. Man. I'm a man on a mission. May not go out in front of that yeah. already though. Please that could, don't. That could hurt the mission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about the mission yet. <laughs> So this is just one of them ones. This is pure spec where we're just completely. And now she's she's doing a gear change at 21, 2200 RPM. And you can see the difference between the two, and you can see where. No. People will say, "Oh, that's easy." He started off in the. He just started off in the the top range. Yep. So that's fine. So for the naysayers. Yep. Fully freighted. Yep. We're we're still on the same mission. Yep. We look round us. Off we go. Once again, she still speed matches. So she's now gone from B six was it to to C one two. I can't remember. Yeah. That's how smooth it was, you see. She didn't seem to be too big an issue for no. her. No. And that is the, we, we call it Intelli Smith or, or Intelli Shift or Smart Range Chain. It is monitoring what you're doing all the time. So it's monitoring, you know, the engine RPM, the load on the tractor, throttle position, even stuff like oil temperature is monitoring. Because um, obviously if it's cold oil, it doesn't spin quite as freely as hot oil. So it's, it's, it's monitoring these things all the time. And it truly is intelligent. So she's come back down. I've touched the clutch there that time. Yep. That's was, was called instinct. That was called. <laughs> yep. But that's fine. So here we are. We're off again. This wee bit of road is some bit of test. <laughs> there you go. She's gone B, B7, C3. Sort of get used to this speed now. 32 miles an hour. Yeah. Happy days. But what you'll see, she's also doing 3200, um, 32 miles an hour at just over. She's not, she's not flat out. So she's actually backed herself off slightly um, to 22,000 RPM. Um, just trying to make it as efficient as it, as it can. Are you really buzzing about it? Love it. I've always loved the T6. She's always been an awesome tractor. She's, um, with you know, we, with every transmission option, she's always an awesome tractor. Um, but with this transmission, she's just a driver's tractor. That's the thing that I love about it. It's so simple, but it can offer you so much. And if you notice, then coming down, you notice she's blipping the throttle slightly, coming down the up, down the gears, and that's literally where that's the smooth shift doing that. So if you, if you've only got a few revs on, if you'll hear it better. Now you're going up the gears, she's just throttling back slightly. And that's just trying to match the engine RPM for the transmission to make every single gear change as smooth as it can. See? Huh. Too warm for that. Air con. <laughs> yeah, the important thing is the air conditioning's <laughs> over there and it works really well. <laughs> it does today, it's working beautifully. 